Okay, now we're on to injury, which deals with forces and strength, um, torques, every, everything that we're covering so far. So this is a pretty horrible looking injury. And then the question is, why couldn't the ankle sustain the load without injury? And it all comes down to these three words. Injury results when the loading on a tissue is greater than the tissue strength. So it's very simple. When load is greater than tolerance or tissue strength, an injury results. However, it's deceivingly simple because once you get into it, it gets very complicated, especially for overuse injuries, etc. And so here are some YouTube videos that we can go through in, um, in class, but showing, showing some injuries um, and any other injuries that you have had or that you've seen, um, be sure to write those down and we can discuss them in class. So we're going to go over types of loads that can be applied to biological tissue, measurement of the tissue strength, right? You don't know if you exceed the strength unless you know what the strength is, and then other factors that affect that tissue strength, and there are many. So the first type of load are axial loads. So we have compression. So here's my cheap animation. And basically you squish the tissue. Cartilage is under compression. Bone is under compression. And then we have tension, where you stretch or lengthen your tissues. Muscles can be injured under tension. Ligaments, your ACL, right? You stretch your ACL until it ruptures, etc. Um, and this just describes compression. It's an axial force, tends to push or squash molecules of the material together. The object under compression deforms by shortening and widening. So if you take a donut, right, it, it gets, it kind of shortens and widens under your compressive force. Bones are under compression during standing. And here's um, a dog sitting on, I don't know, a, a, a chicken or something. Compression. Tension is also an axial force, um, which means it's just normal or longitudinal. So the force tends to pull apart the molecules that bind the object to, together, right? So you get micro tears, micro cracks. The object tends to deform by stretching or elongating. Um, tendons, ligaments, bone, muscle, and cartilage all can be um, under tension. I like to think of it if you have old sweatpants or old underwear where sometimes you you pull the elastic and it just crinkle, crinkle, crinkles. So here's a, uh, an image of tension. Over time, you can um, pull the ends of the tissue apart. All right, shear. Shear is kind of a frictional or a sliding force. And um, so it's parallel to the plane. So it's kind of if you rub your hands together, that's a shear force. The force tends to slide molecules of the object past each other. Shear loads on skin may cause blisters. You guys have probably all experienced that. Shear loading of the tibia on the femur results in tension in the ligaments. So a lot that you we're starting to see the complexity of of loads and injury because one type of loading can result between two bones, say, can result in tension in a different tissue. So this is two um, sponges sliding across each other. All right, torsion is a twisting along the axis. Um, hopefully none of you guys have suffered a spiral fraction, fracture of, your, say, your tibia, um, but this is how it would occur. It's a twisting. So sometimes when people are on skis and the skis rotate, right, it kind of makes a, a, a torsional load along the long axis of your tibia. And here it is in a mop, right? You're, you're twisting um, the tissue. Bending is another um, composite loading. And when you bend something, compression occurs on one side and tension on the other side. So if we have a, a stick or a block here and you bend it, you have con tension on that top side and compression on the bottom side. Bone is always weakest under tension. So if you go to your, your orthopedic surgeon or um, doctor after you fracture a bone, they could tell you how it happened based on where the fracture is because they know that 
that bone is weaker under tension than compression. And here we have an image of bending. All right, so back to my favorite words. So injury is load greater than the tissue tolerance, or another word name for tissue tolerance is strength. So injury results when the loading is greater than the strength. So tissue tolerance is the relationship between the load imposed, or the external force, and the amount of deformation or internal reaction that occurs in the material. Right? So when you plant and twist, the torsional load on your tibia can be fine as long as it's not doesn't create too much deformation in the bone that would result in a spiral fracture. All right, so how do we measure this strength of a tissue? We typically do it by a load deformation curve. And simply, this is that you take a tissue, say this is a tendon, you put a weight on it, see how much it deforms. Then you put another weight on it, see how much it deforms. Put another weight on it, see how much it deforms, until finally you have fracture. All right, typically we don't do this by hanging weights on tissues, but there's some pretty high-end machines that basically apply a load and measure the deformation. And so it doesn't give you an ultimate strength. Um, it tells you a lot of things about the tissue. The max load, the max defor deformation, or what we call the stiffness, which is the slope of the load deformation curve. And here are some images. So this is the long head of the bicep. So you can see it's, it's clamped here, and it basically will be pulled until it fractures, or until it um, rips, if you will. This is a rat femur, and this point will start to go down, 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 apply a bending load, and it'll be tension on this side, compression on this side, and it will measure the deformation and the load until fracture. And you can see here, this is actually a tibia of a rat, and you can see that it did indeed fracture on the tensile side. So different ways we can describe strength. Ultimate strength, or the max of the load deformation curve. Yield strength, which is where it starts to go from elastic or linear to the plastic region. Um, stiffness, as I said, the slope. Max deformation. Toughness, or the energy stored in the tissue, and that is the area under the curve. You can get the fracture strength. And then you can decide, is this a ductile tissue? So is it very stretchy? Or is it a brittle tissue and, and very much like glass? You can't bend it, otherwise it will break. All right, so let's look at this load deformation curve. So you get max load, max deformation. See this energy, so this is the area under the curve. All right, so it, it integrates this area under this curve to get your energy stored in the tissue. Here along the elastic region, this tells you that if you load within this region and you take the load off, the tissue will go back to normal. And so this is where we live during sport and exercise and walking around with our activities of daily living. Once we hit the yield point, we basically hit the point of no return and we enter the plastic region. And during the plastic region, there is some permanent deformation in the tissue. Now the beauty of biological tissue is that it can heal itself. Um, so typically if we go into this plastic region, we get micro tears, micro cracks, then we rest, and then we go back down into the elastic region. Unless we continue on the plastic region until failure. And here's just a, a different view of a load deformation curve. So force for load, elongation for deformation. This tends to be um, a tendon or a ligament. So you can see there's this period where it kind of stretches out, aligns its fibers, and then you get this more stiff region. And here, between two, three, you can see these micro tears, right? It starts to, certain parts of the ligament start to, to fray away, whoop, until finally you have failure. Okay, and this low deformation or stress strain curve just compares the strength and the stiffness of bone versus glass versus metal. And so bone has a little bit of a plastic region, right? So you can see this is the yield point. Glass has no plastic region. It's very brittle. And then metal 
as a huge plastic region. Again, just more comparison. So you can compare tissue A to tissue B. Um, tissue A is more stiff. Tissue B is less stiff and can undergo more deformation. And it doesn't say that B is weaker than A. It's just a different um, strength profile. Again, just a, a different array of, say, titanium has this stiffness. Um, Cancellous bone is less stiff. And then cartilage is the least stiff of these types of tissues. All right, I would use this one to compare. Um, if I said which um, tissue is stronger, has the most, um, undergoes the most strength or, or load, A or D, you would say A, the ultimate load is higher in A or D. Then if I said which is more brittle, A or D, A would be more brittle because D has this nice um, plastic region and much less of a plastic region in A. Um, which tissue has the highest plastic region? That would be E. Um, which is the most, the least stiff material would be E. So you can use this graph to kind of compare the different terms that we just went over. And so I'm going to leave you with, again, injury is when the load on the tissue, either compressive tensile torsion, bending, or shear load, is greater than the tolerance or strength of that tissue. Oh, I'm going to...